Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I, I think one of the frustrations here is that there were structures that should have caught this, and they were either under-resourced, as, as Deputy O'Connor drew attention to, Audit and Risk Committee of two members over an organisation of that revenue and that size, and also this, the Remuneration and Management Development Committee. Um, if these were properly resourced, it would have caught the issues. I, I want to focus back in on that remuneration uh, committee, REMCO as it's called. Um, it didn't meet in 2020. Did it, am, am I right in understanding it met once in 2021? I think that's correct. How many Definitely. times in 2022? Didn't meet in 2022. Has it met in 2023? Yes. How many times? Once. Okay. Um, <coughs> we're supposed to have a minimum of three people on REMCO. How many people are? There are three people on REMCO. So we're at least populated to the minimum. This business of exit packages, so I'm just looking at the duties of REMCO, and B says, consulting with Director General in relation to the remuneration package of executive management. Should this have caught the remuneration uh, with the exit packages, the uh, voluntary exit package? Uh, this is something the Chair and I have um, just been discussing. It doesn't seem to. It's covered remuneration packages. There's a board meeting tomorrow. The terms of reference of the remuneration committee are on that board meeting, and that is part of the discussion. And I direct this to the Director General and, and the Chairperson. Can we please, for the love of God, make sure that REMCO meets at a minimum twice a year, is properly resourced, and can we please have a look at the size of the Audit Committee, Audit and Risk Committee. In fairness to Anne O'Leary, I think it was on St. Patrick's Day she actually came across these two pro problematic invoices and reported up the chain. Um, so even though there was only two people at the committee at the time, at least they caught the thing. The, the, there's a slight misinformation there. There's internal audit in RTE, which is two people, and then there is the internal audit committee of the board, of which there are five people, I, I believe. Four. four, four the four point members. still stands. And an organisation of this side, and we make sure, can we give a commitment here now, that these structures, which should have caught all of this carry-on, can be properly resourced from here out? This is going to be part of the review. We need to have the proper governance in place. <clears throat> and if that means putting more resources in, I've never been one to volunteer to spend more money on accountants, but we'll do it. Okay, well, look, future governance, and, and we had hoped, I had hoped that there would be a future focus today, but uh, I suppose back to that issue of the register of interests, which is something, Mr. Backhurst, that you've committed to. Look, I've said this before, that there's kind of clear blue water in between, you know, the programme that you watch, and then you go to ad break, and you understand the ads are paid for. And that's quite different, in my view, from commercial sponsorship, and it's very, very different from product placement which is a much more opaque way of selling a material. I know the Joint Rocks Committee on Climate uh, in December of last year, they heard about the role of advertising. Uh, they were speaking specifically in terms of climate coverage. And something that they heard is that members of the editorial sit on the internal sponsorship committee. So I think the Chinese wall is quite clear in between advertising revenue and content. I don't think one talks to the other at all, nor should it. But there's no doubt about it. Money buys you influence. Right? We have to be straight and honest about it. Is it appropriate that members of editorial sit on an internal sponsorship committee? And I suppose, Mr. Backhurst, to give you the opportunity, I'm, I'm only giving you 60 seconds, it isn't much, but to lay out your plans in terms of establishing a, re a register of interest, because it should also be clear that if presenters or senior executives are getting money from someplace else, just as it, as it is and should be for politicians. And what are your plans to make that clear to the public, what, what influence money is buying? Mr. Mullen. Can I, can I answer um, your points with regards to advertising, sponsorship and product placement first? Um, there are very, very clear guidelines from formerly BAI, Commission the Man now, in terms of general commercial communications code. They stipulate very strictly as to what you have to adhere. But we add, no, no, just please, please hear me out. But people sell please, porridge no, no, and parking lots. Please, 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 please hear me out. Please hear me out. Advertising, we have two people who clear all the advertising that goes across radio and TV. Every single commercial message that goes out across RT radio and RT TV has to go through the clearance committee. And we have to ensure that we make sure that the ads 
are there, are legal, decent, truthful and honest, and protect our audience. In terms of your question in regards to the sponsorship committee, it is absolutely essential that there are editorial people there because they have a say in terms of saying, is this suitable? We have listed very, very clear sponsorship guidelines on our website as to what is suitable, as to what is not. And similarly with regards to product placement and commission the man measure us in this way, that it, the, the measurement and the um, bar in terms of adherence to code is raised each time. So you get closer to the content, sponsorship, the bar is higher. You get into the content, product placement is higher again. And product placement is very, very heavily restricted. And product placement has to go through an approval process as well. And it's very, very clear, and I am at pains outlining this to people. It is really, really important that it is clear and transparent to our audience with regards to any kind of messaging like that. We, I am constantly telling people you must avoid you. thematic placement. I'm sorry, I just wanted to make, make it clear. Thank you. Okay. Deputy, Deputy McBennett, uh, sorry, Mr. McBennett wishes to come in just briefly. Just very, very briefly, in relation to your register of interests as a manager within RTE, I cannot tell you how much that would be welcomed by the managers within RTE in terms of levelling the playing field across staff because you don't want staff at different levels and you certainly don't want staff who are looking across the fence at somebody who is getting something or maybe getting something or there's an innuendo or a sense. So the register of interest will be welcomed broadly across RTE. Okay, thank you.